with every generation that has passed us by. Long live the cause of freedom. And every event that has shaped who we are comes the awareness that history lives in all of us. Pick a time, choose a place, and escape to where the past comes alive. My eyes have seen the glory. The History Channel. You've heard stories about cats surviving fires, making long journeys, performing amazing feats. No wonder people think cats must have nine lives. But the fact is, a cat is a paradox. At once a tough, resilient machine, at the same time a delicate instrument whose good health depends greatly on the care it gets from others. Hi. Hi, how are you today? Can I help you? Yes, I'm here for my appointment with Dr. Cruz. And what's the kitty here for? The kitty seems to have a little cold. Oh, you get a cold. How Cats depend on humans tremendously. They're so domesticated that they can go out, catch themselves a, a bird or a mouse, something such as that. But they uh, are to the point where they can't survive in the wild. Cats suffer many of the same types of ills as humans. Cancer, heart disease, AIDS, obesity. Their human caretakers can help safeguard their pets from most, but not all, of these problems. Open them up. But sometimes, an owner's good intentions can have a negative effect. Because of their domestication, many house cats have a problem that few of their wild relatives share. Improper diet and obesity. We show our love for our cats by feeding them well, giving them treats, sneaking them people food on occasion. Good boy. Good boy. A typical weight for a female cat is going to be probably eight pounds, a little bit heavier for a female. A cat that's overweight is much more prone to getting arthritis, heart problems, liver problems. If they have to go under anesthesia, they're not a good surgical risk because of all that extra weight. You try and put a cat on a starvation diet or try to get it to go on a diet. When they're overweight and they're very obese, their liver goes through certain changes that that starvation diet will actually cause them to go into liver failure. The wrong kind of cat food can be harmful. Believe it or not, one of Kitty's favorite meals, fish-flavored cat food, could lead to problems. Reason being is that cats are prone to getting a particular condition known as FUS, feline neurological syndrome. And it's a syndrome, so a lot of different things add into the problem. But fish-flavored foods in particular are very high in ash and magnesium and cause problems for the little bladders. They can actually get a blockage in the urinary tract and it can be fatal for some of them. If you think a vegetarian diet for your cat is a good idea, think again. Cats are carnivores. Certain amino acids found only in meat are necessary for their survival. Cats are territorial creatures. They will fight to protect their turf. An aggressive cat will not hesitate to take on an opponent twice its size. The resulting injuries can lead to infections or even death. Experts agree that keeping a cat primarily indoors can greatly increase its lifespan. But dangers lurk indoors as well. 
everyday items around your home could be harmful to a cat. Even though they are meat eaters, cats need to eat certain green plants such as grass. However, some house plants can cause gastrointestinal problems. These and other household hazards can be easily avoided. Good advice? He's as close as the nearest veterinarian. There's another way to prolong the life of a cat and at the same time prevent the suffering of unwanted cats. Veterinarians agree that unless a cat is owned specifically for breeding purposes, it should be neutered. The procedure can now be safely performed on cats as young as six weeks. Not months, weeks. By neutering your pet, you're not going to have to worry about, for instance, having a male cat that wants to mark its territory as much. You're not going to have to worry about having that female go into heat and caterwaul all night, keeping you awake. You're not going to have to worry about the male wanting to get out and get into cat fights. That exposes them to all sorts of diseases like leukemia and feline AIDS. Cat owners spend about $4 billion a year on veterinary services. When serious medical problems arise, facilities like the All Care Animal Clinic in Fountain Valley, California, provide health care services that rival hospitals for humans. Magnetic resonance imaging is an effective alternative to x-ray. We can look at the brain for hydrocephalus or water on the brain or tumors, uh, maybe the cat's walking funny, disoriented, circling. Those would be indications that would be necessary. And in some cases, ultrasound can be used instead of exploratory surgery. The ultrasound is especially good for being able to look inside and seeing the, the structure of movement and texture differences possibly avoiding exploratory surgery. It's good for looking at the function of the cardiac, the muscle, how the valves work. I'm just listening to the aorta right now. Sometimes health problems are breed specific. A Manx cat is undergoing surgery to remove a cyst from its spine. A Manx is bred to have no tail. This characteristic is, in itself, a genetic defect of the spine. Because of this, Manx cats are also prone to these types of cysts. I am not going to go. I do not want to go. Got it. Cats need regular veterinary checkups. Okay. But dog owners are twice as likely as cat owners to bring their pet in for a yearly exam. Cats are more reclusive and are viewed as being more independent. They also will hide signs of illness, a throwback to the wild so as not to appear vulnerable to predators. Just like their human companions, cats need regular dental care. Plaque and tartar buildup can lead to a myriad of health problems. Bacteria from the mouth can affect a cat's liver, kidneys, joints, heart muscles. Just like you, a cat should have its teeth cleaned on a regular basis. It's clear that humans can have a tremendous impact on the health of their cats. <laughs> Consequently, cats can have quite an effect on the health of humans. Over six million people suffer from allergies to cats. About a third of those are cat owners. The most common types of reactions we see with uh, cat allergy is the ones we associate with hay fever. The stuffy nose, the drippy nose, the sneezing watery eyes. It can be much more serious. It can progress on to bad asthma attacks and uh, difficulty breathing. A common misconception is that long-haired cats cause more allergic reactions than short-haired varieties. But it's not the cat's hair that causes the allergies. It is a protein 
present in their saliva. When a cat grooms itself, this protein dries and becomes airborne. When this dander is inhaled, it can cause the human immune system to overreact. Cat dander is everywhere. The protein is only one-tenth the weight of common house dust and hangs in the air for a very long time. This protein has been found in areas where a cat has never been. Most people will get rid of their doctor before they get rid of their cat. And uh, what we need to do in those cases is teach the people how to live with their cat in a way that uh, is tolerable for them and the cat. Oh, he just wants on. to come right up and come say on. hello. Come on. Come <laughs> on. Yeah. Oh, he likes to be held this way. Cats can have a positive effect on human health as well. It's all right. There you go. How's that? Oh. <laughs> the LASPCA operates a program called Animal Assisted Therapy. Volunteers like Aaron Bishop visit convalescent homes so residents can interact with the animal. He loves to have his head scratched. Oh, sure, they all do. Yeah. Cats are particularly well suited for this type of therapy. Their size makes them easy to handle and for some inspires the same warm feelings as if holding an infant. Just interacting with a cat this way has been shown to reduce depression and increase mental alertness. Cats or any pet um, provide unconditional love. Cat doesn't care if you just had a chemotherapy treatment and you have no hair. Cat doesn't care that you can't run up the stairs as fast as you used to 20 years ago. <laughs> You're a big cat, you really are. Very good. Sandy Blixton was diagnosed with AIDS in 1986. He lost his home, his job, and his companion. His doctor suggested that he give up his cat, Tara, fearing the cat could spread opportunistic diseases. Sandy found a friend who was willing to take her. Oh, yes, that was a breeze. I didn't realize how important she was to me until I did give her up. I found that I wasn't sleeping at night. I found that I was actually looking for her all the time, just like a, a, a companion who had passed away and you can't believe they're gone. You call the name out, they're gone, there's no answer. And I started to go downhill. I really started to feel bad. And I started to get sicker and sicker and uh, not respond to the medications as I had been. As his health continued to deteriorate, Sandy's doctors finally agreed that he could get Tara back. He got assistance from an organization called Paws LA, which helps AIDS patients keep and care for their pets. Immediately, Sandy's health began to improve. Yes, yes. Good girl, good girl. Cat did give me something to live for. Um, she gave me, she gave me something to go on. She gave me someone to come home to at night. And she gave me someone to say hello to in the morning again. It's a symbiotic relationship, that of a person and a cat, each able to benefit the health and well-being of the other. And if you don't believe it, as plain as a smile on a face. As much money as people spend keeping their cats healthy, they spend even more trying to keep them happy. Who's to say whether this conspicuous consumption is really for the benefit of the cats or the owners? The business of cats is a curious thing. 
Each year, Americans spend about $4 billion on cat food alone. That's roughly $1 billion more than they spend on baby food. But the buck doesn't stop there. Many cat lovers think nothing of plunking down their dollars on countless items. Everything from the ordinary to the extraordinary. If someone from outer space were to look at the way we treat our pets, they would say, oh, that, that is a god, that we don't call it that in, in our society, but they would think, well, that's a pretty special um, creation that they're treating them that way and giving them all the best. Humans relate on a human level, so it's very natural for them to take their own behaviors, their own wants and desires, and transfer them onto a, a cat or a dog. We have these great litter box covers. If you don't like the way your litter box looks, just a plain plastic, you can get a custom-made cover put on it. You can get a matching bed along with that. And you can choose from any one of these swatches of fabric. These are great. I have one myself. We sell a lot of these. They start at $50 for this size, and they go up from there. Specialty stores like Pampered Paws in New York City cater to a very select clientele, one that is not on a budget. We have a life vest for the, uh, for the boat cat, nice party dress, this is about $75. We have a leather jacket for the biker cat, this is $45 and up. And of course, we have a tuxedo rent with option to buy, $60 and up. Thank you very much. Vendors offer cat lovers a vast array of products. Being a creature that can live in the wild as well as in a home, Cats don't appreciate these extravagances as much as their human counterparts. This is called Perfect Privy. It's a litter containment system for the cat's litter box. The cat goes in through the opening on the side, walks across the grid, and goes down into the bottom where the litter pan would be. When they're finished, they walk across the grid again on the way out, which causes all the litter to fall off their feet, land back into the pan where it started, and it does not track out all over the house. Cats love carrying up and down the spiral ramp. The pet patio is the unit that you pop into your window. This is a toy for every cat in America. A cat show is not just a place for cat owners to show off their cats, but also a prime venue for vendors to hawk their wares. This is Kenny, and he's modeling stud pants at the cat show. Now these are used for cats that spray in the house, basically for whole cats, either male or female. The females, of course, we, we provide stud pants that have flowers, sometimes lavender and pink. This is also used as a chastity belt. It costs about $7,000 care for a household cat over its lifetime. That figure only covers a cat's basic needs. Food, cat box filler, routine medical care, toys and grooming supplies. For those who prefer their cat to live in the lap of luxury, the cost can be a lot higher. I want a bath today and a bath today. I pick them up. A bath today and a bath tomorrow. You can take them home and let them sleep in your bed if you okay, want. I don't try that. <laughs> The Holiday Pet Hotel in Encinitas, California, provides first-rate lodging for cats. A variety of theme-designed accommodations are available for short or long-term visits.
they want not only the luxury suites, they want daily pet and play sessions and VIP care and pampering and extra brush outs and these can go as much as thirty, thirty-five dollars a day. So that may be considered extreme, but for our clients who feel that their pets are their children, and to a lot of them they are, um, this is nothing. Indulging a cat in this fashion most likely assuages the guilt of the pet owner more than it satisfies the cat. Although some would argue that cats know a good thing when they see one. The cats have uh, classical and other music playing throughout the day, and then they have their video entertainment where they can sit and watch catnip videos, uh, birds and squirrels running around on the television set. They really enjoy that. hotel includes spa services. Clients can take a soak in the tub. Yeah. Be good for your skin. Oh, that's a good boy. All done it for that. And get a new hairdo. Cats can even get a workout with a personal trainer. Oh, you like that catnip, huh? Yes, sir. Puts you in the right mood. In reality, cats are basic creatures. What's important to a cat is that it is comfortable and well-fed. What's important to the cat's owner is that their pet is well cared for, and in some cases that means nothing but the best. Cats don't know the difference between expensive and inexpensive products. A basic cat box, food and water dish, scratching post, and lots of love are all that any cat really needs. In the end, no amount of money can buy a cat's love. They decide when to bestow us with their affection, and this is their gift to us. If you read the comics, you see Felix, Heathcliff, Garfield. If you read children's literature, you know Puss in Boots, Cat in the Hat, the Cheshire Cat. And how many times have you used the expressions, take a cat's nap, or has the cat got your tongue? Well, cats have undoubtedly worked their way into our homes, but they've also worked their way into our popular culture. And it began a long time ago. Probably the first cat to achieve celebrity status appeared about 3,000 years ago in Egypt. The god Bastet was depicted in the popular media, mostly stone, and idolized by the masses. From that time, cats have been immortalized in paint, ink, on television, in film and music. Is it about these independent creatures that has entertained us through the centuries? We like to think that we're part of the, the world and at the same time we want to appear to be independent. And cats are just that way. They seem to kind of fit in uh, and yet they're never really tamed. They're really never domesticated. They're always, always independent and aloof from us. And I think there's something that appeals to everybody about that. Radio! beginning of this century, cats leapt into the mass media and popular culture with the appearance of the first cartoon cats. Polly and her pals and Crazy Cat were the first of many famous comic strip cats. I don't know why uh, cats are so uh, popular in cartoons and um, in 
pop culture. Um, they do have nice, round, friendly faces and big eyes. They have these baby-like features and that they have sort of short faces and they are you know, nice, cuddly animals. Felix, one of the most famous cartoon cats of all time, first appeared not in comic strips, but in movies in 1917. Patrick McDonald carries on the tradition of comic cats with his strip called Mutts, featuring Mooch and his dog pal Earl. McDonald studied his own cats for inspiration when creating Mooch. He was a one-shot deal. I drew him and I knew that was it. I didn't, I didn't really draw a bunch of different style cats. Uh, he just appeared. <laughs> That's a cat quality thing. They sort of just wander into your life and uh, you have a cat. The strip I try to do from an animal's point of view, so a lot of times I just look at them and try to think, you know, what's their day like? What do they do? I mean, my strip's fairly simple. They, they like just hang out in the backyard or talk to birds. I mean, they, they talk about weather a lot. I figured cats and dogs would, <laughs> would talk about weather a lot. Jim Davis's Garfield is popular both in comic strips and as an animated series. Living a leisurely life seems to be a recurring theme with cartoon cats, probably because cats spend a lot of time being generally lazy. This combination of cat and human traits is perhaps what makes cartoon cats so appealing. Real cats have also found themselves center stage. In film, Pepper was the first feline star. He was a stray who was discovered when he wandered into a sound stage. While their parts are usually limited, cats have been stealing scenes in film ever since. This version of the classic love story, Romeo and Juliet, may be one of the most unusual films ever made with cats as stars. It is the work of Italian director Armando Acosta. I had to cast the film as you would any film. And I had to look for cats that had the character of those very, very well-known characters of Shakespeare's work. And I wanted, uh, for Juliet, who is the main character, of course, I wanted... Uh, a cat that could swim, and I don't know whether most people know this, but the Turkish Angora, that particular breed, are swimmers. The director is not directing actors. The director is directing and being with his cats. So their motivation is just to please you in the end. television, probably the only cat who could upstage Shakespeare, is Morris, one of the best-known pitch men, or pitch cats, to be exact. That's me. Attention, pavilion shoppers. Morris, the Nine Lives cat, is here visiting our store today. Morris, the world's most famous finicky feline. 
you're the star. So come on, get to it, it's your show, come on and do it, you're the star. Yes, you are. No one's ever gonna doubt it, everybody's gonna shout it, you're the star. Many cat owners can relate to Morris's finicky attitude. You're going to love this, Morris. Not necessarily. Watch now. It certainly captures her personality. I think people enjoy the fantasy cats because they have similar qualities to what they see in their own pets, yet they project the values of humans onto these cats so that if my cat could talk, this is what my cat would say. Time for din din. Sit tight, Morris. It's the finicky hour. In the past 25 years, there have been three Morrises. Dawn Haney is both trainer and best friend to Morris III. This Morris was rescued from a humane society, as all the Morrises have been. And he was about five years old when he was rescued. So he really is a rags-to-riches case. He's a lucky kitty. But I knew as soon as I saw him that he was the one. He just had a magical presence, a, a great face. And it turned out, thank goodness, a, a good personality to go along with it. Um, he's finicky, of course which he really is, but he's also a very nice cat. The sensuality and sex appeal of cats is evident in both film and television. The slinky moves, sly looks, and overall indifference have inspired actors and writers alike. But on television, one of the sexiest cat characters wasn't a cat at all. Wow! <laughs> Eartha Kitt starred as Catwoman on the Batman television series back in the 60s. They gave me the costume, and I wanted it to be as simple as possible. And there was not m much makeup to do because I had the mask on most of the time. And the times that I didn't have the mask on, the, the makeup was going towards the cat-like look. Because they say I look like a cat, so they just followed my own face lines. But there was not much to be exaggerated about the cat woman because the body, they said, was very feminine and very feline and very felt. So there was not much to do except just be. And that's what I did. I was just be me. <laughs> In the music world, many cats have been the subject of songs, but only a few have been the actual singers. It might not be as big as the Beatles, but the Jingle Cats have made the charts. Day I brought my cats in the studio. I brought Cheese Puff with me, and he started meowing along with the song that I was working on. And I was working on Jingle Bells. I realized that they were really singing different notes, and when they did a meow from coming from a high note down to a lower note, they were usually, um, you know, diatonic scale, and their meowing was always. Uh, on key. We found out that cats all over the country were, were clawing at people's speakers, and um, they thought the cats were inside the, their speakers. Independence of cats is legendary. They're considered aloof, indifferent, self-reliant. Any cat owner will tell you a cat does what it wants, when it wants, and there's nothing you can do to change its mind. Well, not necessarily. <laughs> Hello, 
There's a common perception that cats can't be trained. <laughs> Far too independent. They simply don't respond to commands like stay or sit or perform tricks. Never. They're not dogs, after all. Hey, Jeff. Just kidding. Here you go, Jeff. Yes. All right. Well, this general impression is false. Cats can be trained to do, well, just about anything. Door. Around. Go around. Door. 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 That's it. Okay. Mo and Sue DeSesso are professional animal trainers who work with a variety of animals, including cats, and prepare them for acting roles in movies and television. Door. 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 Good. The DeSessos operate a sprawling menagerie near Los Angeles. <laughs> Having worked with just about every kind of animal, they believe that when it comes to training, cats deserve more credit than people tend to give them. They understand what you're saying. They understand key words. They're not really as hard to train as people think they are. It's just that cats are smart enough to sit back and let you think they're not too smart. I'll be in condition when I get through. I'm in training for you. Training techniques for cats and dogs are very different. Dogs are a pack animal, always communicating with members in their social hierarchy. Dogs can be dominated and respond eagerly to command. Cats, on the other hand, are loners who live life on their terms. Cats respond to suggestions. I'm in training for you. Roger. Good job. Roger. Up. Up. You can't push him. You can't force them. If they don't like to do it, go on to something else. Go and jump some more. Go ahead, jump. jump. Oh. Up. You have to be very, very delicate and kill them with kindness. Good kitty, yes, sir. And baby talk them and, oh, you know, and they hear that and, oh, boy, I did something nice for daddy. I'm in training for you. I'm in training for you. Oh, boy, that was great. The personality is not to underestimate them. Karen McElhatton of Studio Animal Services is continually amazed by the sophisticated behavior exhibited by her cats. He's a good boy. And they just are ready for the very next thing, as quick as you can dream it up. You know, they're ready to learn it. Snickety. Stay. Stay. Sit. Sit. Pay attention. Pay attention. Patience is the key to training a cat. Each cat must be thought of as an individual, like a child who learns at his own pace. Snickety. One cat might take several days or weeks to learn a behavior. Another cat might learn the same behavior in just minutes. Light. Not all cats are easily trained. It's rare to find a cat like Tiger, who in a brief time span is able to learn a variety of behaviors. Oh, goody kitty, yes sir, he did a good job, honey. Yes sir. Unlike Tiger, most actor cats are specialists inclined to do one behavior extremely well. Like that cat being a natural climber, then we naturally use that one for climbing trees. And uh, the black cat naturally rubs, so we use that one to rub on cue. We try to use what that cat does naturally the best and then work on that as a, a well, I can't say it's a trick, but as a behavior that's controlled that we actually control on the set to do it when the director asks. And that, of course, is the challenge facing professional felines. They're called upon to perform on cue amidst the chaos of crews and equipment at that precise moment when the director yells, action. <laughs> 
These animals must continue to perform through take after take until the director is finally satisfied. Not every cat will make a good actor. It's a cat that just could care less about any amount of, um, you know, carrying on of stuff. So that cat that is really confident and um, loves treats and food. And if you go over to someone's house and the cat comes right up to you, you know, starts looking and be patted and stuff. That's the kind of cat that's, that's really cool for a film. Professional trainers often find their cool cats at the town. Hi, what's going on? Hmm? Yeah. We look for cats, you know, that are, they're looking for you. You know, they're looking to see who will stick their fingers in and pet them. We look for uh, extrovert cats, you know, that's what we want. Computer technology can now be combined with training to achieve outrageous effects with no harm to the cat. Slight shedding problem? A trainer uses a drop of water to get the cat to shake its head on cue as if it's sneezing. A dummy cat is filmed in the same position as a jet of air blows off artificial fur. Another trained cat is made up to look disheveled and must sit in the same position. When all of the takes are combined and enhanced with the aid of a computer, the cat appears to spontaneously shed en masse. Slight shedding problem? Get a Bissell Plus. While computers can add to the overall effect, they still can't take the place of a well-trained cat. work with them lots and lots of, of training sessions in a relaxed manner rather than taking them out and going, now you're getting trained. Oops. Play. That's it. Good. All right. It took Mo six months to train his incredible cat band. pay for a job well done is a kind word, a loving pat, and food. Food is a way of communicating with the animal. Um, we reward the animal when he's done something right. And the animal, once they've learned that they've communicated with you, it's like you, you watch a little light flip on their head, and they say, think, oh my goodness, this is great. We can communicate, and then they get even more willing to do this. All right. Yes, sir. Oh, boy, we're going to get a raise for you. This clicker provides a link or bridge for the cat between a behavior that is being reinforced and the reward. To the cat, the click means, I did something right. Now I'm going to get paid. With this tool, a trainer can develop, shape, and refine an action. The thing that's great about a clicker is that you can do it right at that little moment, that tiny moment when the animal has done something that progresses what you're trying to train. So you can take it a little bit further by manipulating when you do the clicker. Using praise and reward techniques with a little patience, anyone can train a cat. I think a lot of cats get bored in their homes. They lay around all day, they may play with some cat toys. Training really stimulates them mentally. 
so they're a lot happier. Plus, they have something to look forward to doing with their owner. Why don't we start some basic training with him? Okay. All right, and then we'll see about his uh, little biting routine. Okay. All right. How old is Jack? Brian Kilcommons yeah. believes training forges a strong bond between a cat and its owner. Jack, said hi. Said hi. Good. Good. Good kitty. While it's ideal to work with a kitten, even an older cat, like two-year-old Jazz, can be taught to obey certain commands and correct unwanted behavior. Requirements? Quiet place, several brief training sessions a day, and a hungry cat. Oh, okay. a little bit awkward. So you teach him to come to you. Jazz, come. As with the professional felines, a favorite food is used as a lure. The cat begins to connect the command come, or sit, to the bait. The offer of food is gradually decreased until the cat automatically responds to the command. This usually takes about a week. Jazz, ow. He does this whenever, sometimes I'll just come home from work and I'll just, I'll start petting him and then he'll just turn on me and start nipping at my fingers. A couple of things. Unfortunately, many owners have unwittingly helped develop some unwanted, aggressive behavior in their pet. John did this by playing roughly with Jazz when he was a kitten. Now the adult cat thinks his owner is one big cat toy. With work, this bad behavior can still be corrected. Okay, and there I go for the hands. Okay, so you stop. Squirt him. Okay. Good. Very nice. Terrific. This is not a contest, nor is it a battle. Animals don't go out of their way to make our lives miserable. Most of them try to do as much as they can to please us or understand what we want or what we don't want. Hey, Jazz, come. Come, Jazz. Good boy. Good boy. Look at that. Yes, Terrific. you're the best. Terrific. It's our job, through good hey, training, to Get teach up. them exactly what we want good and boy. what we don't want that doesn't include any hitting or yelling or pain and intimidation. Great. Yeah, he, it looks like he's learning already. And you can't train a cat, huh? Yeah, well, guess not. <laughs> <laughs> sure, that's very right out the window. I don't think we'll ever fully understand the common cat, which isn't at all common. The more we explore the cat's world, the more we realize we just can't understand everything. The cat is destined to remain mysterious. And I think that's great. I'm Jack Perkins. Thanks for watching.